Hi everybody, this is a, hopefully a relatively short video that's going over the homework for One Way ANOVA. And so question number one asks you to examine the difference between groups variability within groups. Again, between groups variability is uh, due to the effect of the IV. So if we're having red versus green versus blue in terms of the perception of attraction, it's the, the between groups would be how much the groups vary, those color groups, red, green, blue, on attraction. So it's the effect of the IV. And then within groups variability is just how people naturally differ. And so um, it's also called sampling error. But if you want to think about it, um, again, if you just look within the color group, if you just look within the red group, for example, although you would do this for all, all three groups, but look in the red group and you look at the red mean and you'd say, oh, everybody who saw red should be having the same amount of attraction. Of course, that's not true. People differ, uh, even with the IV's effect of red uh, as a color. Um, so people will differ within that group. So that is just how people just naturally differ. Some people see other people as more attractive, some less. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the color. It has nothing to do with the IV. It has just to do that people differ. Um, so it's also called sampling error. It doesn't really matter what you want to call it in terms of sampling error versus just how people vary naturally. And of course, that's the, um, the F ratio is the between groups, the effect of the IV on top, and is it bigger relative to the sampling error or just how people naturally vary um, or the within groups variability. Um, so we would hope that our IV produces bigger differences than just are there just naturally uh, because people differ. I'm gonna get to this table in a second. I can't move it down uh, because of some weird formatting issues going on. And so question number two is it's asking what I just talked about is what if the between groups variability is much larger than within? Well, that's the F ratio. So if the top is larger than the bottom, then your F is going to be fairly big. It's going to be greater than one, hopefully substantially greater than one. Uh, so basically it means that there's an effect of the IV. If you've done something to change people's attraction levels, with the colors that people wear more than um, just people vary in general, then it looks like you have evidence for you change them somehow. You change them more than they just naturally differ amongst each other. So the F should be significant. So the IV, obviously, then we have evidence that the IV has a significant effect then. Number three, you were asked to fill out uh, a NOVA summary table. Remember, we don't need to do the degrees of freedom or mean squares for total. Why is that? Because we don't need that for the um, the F test. Uh, if you include the degrees of freedom, I think, I don't know. You really shouldn't have it, though. Um, you really should just have the information that you need for the F. So sum of squares. So 30 is the blank. Well, how do we get 30? So we take the total 182 subtract within the leftover is between so remember that between plus within equals total so if you know these two you just take total minus within to get 30 for the between um, and then for this one you have to do a little bit of extra work perhaps because you, you're given a two and then a blanks here so we know in this study, we had three levels, so right here, three levels of the independent variable. We had 20 in each group, so three times 20, so we had 60 people, six zero overall. So if you have six zero overall, the total degrees of freedom would be 60 minus one, which would be 59. So 59 minus 2 is 57. So again, between plus within equals total. So if 59 total, we have 2 between 57 
is left over. Then the rest is pretty easy. So get the mean squares between, we just take mean square, I'm sorry, the sum of squares between divided by sum of squares, I'm sorry, divided by degrees of freedom between. So sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom between 30 divided by two is 15. Same thing here, it's just a little bit more difficult to do. I can't do it in my head. So we have sum of squares for within 152 and degrees of freedom is 57. So 152 divided by 57 is 2.667. The only thing now that we have to do is get the F. To get the F, we take the mean squares, the average variance for between 15 divided by mean square, I'm sorry, the mean squares, yeah, within, which is the average variance within groups, how people just naturally vary. So here we have 15 divided by 2.667. The F comes out to be that. So 15 divided by 2.667 is 5.62. It doesn't ask us to do a significance test, so we don't need to worry about putting a star there or not. Then number four, ask why is it necessary to do follow-up tests if the overall F ratio is significant? So remember that the F test is just telling us that there's some difference. Analysis of variance. The variance between the groups is greater than the variance within groups. Um, so it's just telling us in general uh, that the groups are differing more than people just naturally vary. And so if, if that's significant, it doesn't tell us what groups vary. It just tells us the groups vary somehow. And so now we need post hocs to do the actual paired comparisons. So if we have an overall F that's significant for the study I've been talking about, the colors, uh, we then, so significant F, then we have to go do the post hocs. We have to compare each group. So we have to compare red versus green, red versus blue, and green versus blue. And so that's why we need to do the follow-up test to see exactly where the differences are. Then the final question is actually a problem that you need to work through. And so just as a quick summary, always convert the raw data into that little worksheet thing I showed you. So square the scores. I can't unfortunately go down this column here. But for our Caucasian defendants, here's their squared score. So six times six is 36. Seven times seven is 49. Same thing for African-American. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Same for, thing for Latino. 10 times 10 is 100. Six times six is 36. So square those scores. And I just put it in a separate column. Then we start adding things up. So add up the raw scores. And so this is actually a T, so you can label it this way or you can call it a T. The T is the sum of the raw scores. So this is, for Caucasians, their T is 30. African-American, the T is 80. We're just adding the raw scores. And for Latino, it's the T is 70. And then I square that T. So T is 30 for Caucasian. 30 times 30 is 900. So this is a T square here. 80 is the T for African-American. 80 times 80 is 6,400. And then 70 is the T for Latino. 70 times 70 is 4,900. So there's my T squared. And then don't forget to add the squared score. So remember we squared the scores. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25. So we add these squared scores, and so that gives us the sum of x squared for each of the three conditions. And then to complete our little worksheet that will give us all the numbers we need, we want to figure out the means. So how do you get the means? Well, you get the means by taking the t, the sum of the scores, divided by the number of people. 
and I believe there's 10 people in each group, yeah. So that's really easy. 30 is the sum of the scores divided by 10 is 3. 80, the sum of the scores divided by 10, 8 is the mean. 70 divided by 10, the mean is 7. Don't forget to get the sum of squares. You can get the sum of squares by just putting these raw data into the calculator online that I showed you, or any calculator that you find that works well. And then also the standard deviation. So the standard deviation you can do with an online calculator also. Just put the raw scores in for the group, and you got the standard deviations. And in this example, I've actually added other things together that we need. So actually, I did the sum of x squared right away. So remember the sum of x squared we did for each group. So we squared each of their scores, squared each of the scores here. The highlighting doesn't work well. Squared each of the scores here and squared each of the scores here. And then I summed up these squared scores. So I summed up this column. That's the sum of x squared for Caucasian. This over here is the sum of x squared for African American. And this is the sum of x squared for Latino defendants. So those three conditions. And so the sum of x squared overall is just adding those together. So it's just simply 160 plus 722 plus 594. So 160, 722, 594. So the sum of x squared for the whole study is 1,476. We're going to be using that in a second for one of our formulas. And then to get g, we just add all the scores together. So to get g, we can just add our t's together. So 30 plus 80, because remember these t's are adding the scores together. Add the scores, add the scores, add the scores. So add 30 plus 80 plus 70 to get the g. 30 plus 80 plus 70 gives us a g of 180. If we take g squared, that's 180 times 180. That's 32,400. So now we have x squared and we have g squared right here. We can start plugging in the formulas. So remember the first step is we have to get the sum of squares total, sum of squares between, and sum of squares within. So sum of squares total is the sum of x squared, subtract g squared minus capital N. Capital N is the total number of people in this one-way ANOVA study. So we already did the sum of x squared, remember? I added the x squares for each of the conditions. So square, these squares, I added them together. These squares, I added them together. These squares, I added them together. And just down here, I just added those together. So those are those columns. Adding up the x squared, and it comes out to 1476. I can put it right away. Sum of x squared is one, 1476. Then we have minus g squared over n. So remember, I got g squared here. So remember, g squared again was the t's, adding up the score. So for this condition, here's the t, 30. This condition, the t was 80. This condition, the t was 70. And so we added those together. 30 plus 80 plus 70 gets 180. 180 times 180 is 32,400. That's g squared, 32,400. We had 10 groups, I'm sorry, 10 people in three groups. So there's 30 people in total, capital N. So now we have the filled in equation. We have 1,476 minus the ratio of 32,400 divided by 30. You solve this first. <clears throat> so that's 1,080. So now we have 1,476 minus 1,080. So your sum of squares total should be 396. So again, all we're doing is we're plugging things in from our little worksheet above. So sum of squares between, 
is telling us for every group, look at the sum of their scores, t, but that squared, t squared divided by n, do that for every group and add those things together, and then subtract it from g squared over capital N, which is exactly the last part of the sum of squares total also. We already know that that's 1,080. You can take that number from there if you want to. So remember, we got t squares up here. So t was just taking for this column, adding up the scores. t squared is multiplying that by itself. So t is 30. 30 times 30 is 900. Then for this condition, t was 80. I can't highlight it, but t was 80. You can see it here with my cursor, I hope. And then 80 times 80 is 6,400. So that's t squared for that group. And then 70 for this con condition. So 70 times 70 is 4,900. So your t squares are down here in this row. And then remember, we have 10 people in each group. So small n is 10. So again, for each group, take that t squared, divide by the number of people in the group. There was 10 in each group. So t squared for the first group, first condition was 900. There was 10 people, so 900 divided by 10. Plus t squared for the second condition, African-American, was 6,400. So it's 6,400, which was t squared, divided by 10, which is small n, number of people in that. Then finally, for Latino condition, t squared was 4,900. We divide that by 10. There's 10 people in that group. And then remember, we're subtracting g squared over capital N. We know that's 1,080. Why do we know that? Because we figured it out in the sum of squares total. So we can just bring that number down if we want to. So if we take these, and probably I should do it. I don't know why I didn't type it out all the way here. Remember your order of operations. So we're just going to ignore the G squared over capital N for now. So 900 divided by 10, we all know what it's going to be, right? It's going to be 90. So we have 90. And then 6,400 6, divided by 10 is 640. And then 4,900 divided by 10 is 5, 490. So we have 90, which was 900 divided by 10, plus 6,400 divided by 10, that's 640, plus 4,900 divided by 10, that's actually 490. So the sum of t squared, and I'm going to move this, the sum of t squared over n is 1,220. So we have 1,220, which is the sum of t squared over n. And then we have to subtract g squared over capital N. And we already know from the SS total, it's 1,080. So we just simply subtract 1,080. Oops, that was adding. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I might have to redo that. Sorry about that. 90, 640, 490 equals, and I'm going to subtract, maybe I'll do it here, it's easier to see, 1,080. So voila, it's 140. 140. So between treatments, we have 140 uh, sum of squares. Sum of squares within is just adding up the sum of squares in each of the treatments, each of the conditions. So we did this, so you can take the numbers, the raw data here in this column, this column, this column, and individually. So take this one first, take the data, put it in the online calculator, find the sum of squares right here. Then take the numbers in this column, Find the sum of squares for this column. Then for this column, find the sum of squares here. So the sum of squares were 70, 82, and 104. We simply just add those together to get the sum of squares within for the experiment. And again, you get this from the online calculator that we talked about in the lecture.
So sum of squares within is just adding those together. 70 plus 82 plus 104, 256. And let's double check. So we have sum of squares total was 396. We have sum of squares between 140 and sum of squares within 256. So between plus within should equal total, and they do. So our double check suggests that we did something right, because it's not very likely that we would find those numbers just randomly. So the first step was the sum of squares. And the second part is we got to get the degrees of freedom. Why do we have to get degrees of freedom? Because we need to have degrees of freedom to find the average variance, because there's a lot more pieces going into the within sum of squares. So it'd be unfair to divide those two things if they're just raw. There's just they don't make sense. We need average. We need the average variance. So sum of squares, I'm sorry, de degrees of freedom total is just capital N minus one. Capital N is everybody in the study minus one. So there's three groups, 10 people in each group. There's 30 people, 30 minus one, so 29 degrees of freedom in total. The degrees of freedom within is N minus K. N is the number of people in the full study. That's 30. We have it up here also. K is the number of conditions. 30 minus 3. There's three groups. There's three conditions. So there's 27 degrees of freedom within. And between is really easy. So between is the number of conditions, K minus 1. We have three conditions minus 1. So we have two degrees of freedom for between. And this checks out. Between degrees of freedom, 2, plus degrees of freedom within, 27, equals the total of 29. So it looks like we're doing things right. So now we need to find the average variance for between and average variance for within. To find the average variance, all we do is take the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So between means squares between. We are going to take sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom between. Sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom between. Our mean square between is 70. So the average variance between those groups is 70. Then we do the same thing for within. So we take the within, sum of squares within, degrees of freedom within, to get the mean square, the average variance within. So we take the sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom within, and we get a mean square of 9.48. Now we're almost done with our F. So now we just simply take the mean squares between, divided by the mean squares within, so 70 is the mean squares between, divided by mean squares within, 9.48. We get 7.38 as our F. So if we go to the table and we find our critical value for 2 degrees of freedom and 27, so 2 degrees of freedom is from between, so always go between first, which is on top. Between's on top. So there's three conditions, three minus one. There's two degrees of freedom. And then within is the bottom, Then so it's 27. So we look in our table, and maybe I should do that here. Let's try the ANOVA table. ANOVA. Hopefully I get the same thing as I have before. Uh, let me just try the F test. F table. Okay, so F table, we had this link. And so we're going to be looking up, it's here in the same thing, 227. So we're going to be looking up in the table. 
the critical value at 2, 27, 2 in the columns, 27 in a row. So 2 in the columns and 27 in a row, excuse me, I have to go down quite a bit. So 2 in the columns, 27 in a row is right here. So it looks like it's 3.354. So I go to the critical value here, 3.35. We can even round it up to 3.36 if we want to, um, but we don't need to. We don't need to worry about too much here because our calculated T, or uh, sorry, F, 7.38 is greater than the one from the table, which was 3.354. So whenever we find a stat that's bigger than that's in the table, we reject the HO. It means that we found that there's a bigger effect than we need to say at the alpha 0 0.05 level that something's going on. There's an effect there. So we're going to reject the HO. The last thing we need to do is we need to find the effect size. So the effect size really is pretty easy in the ANOVA because the ANOVA, we're curious about the percent of variants that our IV is responsible for in terms of the DV. So how much of the judgments of guilt, what percentage of the judgments of guilt in terms of the variants, the differences among people, was directly linked to whether they were told the defendant was Caucasian, African-American, or Latino. So it's a pretty easy formula. So it's the sum of squares between groups. So it's the variance between the groups, between those three conditions we just said, divided by the variance in total. That gives you a percent of variance that's from the between groups effect, the IV. So in this study, it's 140 divided by 130, I'm sorry, 140 divided by 396. Our eta square is 0.35, which is a large effect when we look at the table in the lecture. So remember that when we do this little write-up, we want to say that go look at table one for the descriptive statistics. Uh, table two, we have our ANOVA table. Then we have a sentence about the overall effect. So in this case, using a one-way ANOVA, ethnicity of defendant had a significant effect on perceptions of guilt. So just a very simple statement about the relationship. Ethnicity of defendant, ethnicity of defendant has significant effect on perceptions of guilt. So our IV had an effect on the DV. Then we give our stat information. So we have a comma, F, just like our T's, we need our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom between two. Degrees of freedom within 27. Then we give our F that we calculated. That's what we calculated, 7.38. It's significant. So I did another test. This is a, I was using this uh, previously. We should say uh, P is less than 0 0.05. So we used the 0 0.05. Uh, alpha. So you, you should say P is less than 0 0.05. Then we have the effect size. The effect size was large, 0.35. So 35%, 35% of the variance in the judgments of guilt was directly linked to whether the person was told they were Caucasian, African American, or Latino, the ethnicity condition. So the effect size was large. Eta square equals 0.35. So we've been talking about that we aren't going to do post-talks by hand. So just be honest, I didn't do it by hand. But when we look at the means, so this is table one, these are the means. They kind of jump out at you, right? These two conditions, when the person was told the defendant was African American or Latino, look clearly higher on uh, guilt judgments versus when they were told they were Caucasian. This line. So just looking at these means, I can't highlight just the means, but looking at these means, Caucasian versus African American and Latino, there's pretty clear differences here. <clears throat> 
but participants told that the defendant was African American or Latino seemed, so I said seemed because we haven't tested it with our stats yet, seemed to have higher ratings of guilt versus those told that the defendant was Caucasian. So we do a quick little look in our table one. If if the F is significant, if it's not, then you don't go digging to look at group differences. So again, this write-up is pretty standard. Sentence one, refer to the descriptive table. Sentence two, refer to the ANOVA summary table. Sentence three, say what the relationship is between the IV and DV. Is it a significant relationship or not? Give the statistical data from the F test. And then the fourth sentence is the effect size. And then if you have a significant F, you reject the HO for things that are by hand, just say that you didn't do post X by hand, but you looked at the table number one and you think these are the differences. And table two is the ANOVA summary table. So remember in the summary table for the one-way ANOVA, there's three sources. There's between groups, variability within, and total. So this summary table is just like our steps in solving the ANOVA. The first step was sum of squares. So sum of squares between, sum of squares within, sum of squares total. Between plus within equals total. Then we had to find out the degrees of freedom. And anyway, it looks like total, you can put total there. I think in the homework I, earlier I said don't put the total. I am going to live with it either way. If you have it there or don't have it there, I'm not going to make a big deal. Because obviously I have it here. In some ways I have it here, at least for the teaching part of it. So for the teaching part of it, total equals between plus within degrees of freedom. So I'm not going to be a stickler on whether you have this or not in your summary table because I put it here and I probably put it here mainly for teaching purposes. So it's it's a minutia. We don't need to worry about that too much. So for these two columns, we can always double check our numbers, our calculations, and make sure that our betweens plus within equals the total. Then our next step is we need to find the average variance for between and average variance for within. Why average? Because again, we have a lot more pieces for the within. You can see it has an impact here. So if we just take the sum of squares, it's unfair because there's a lot more pieces in the within. That's why we need an average. The average is sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So sum between sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom and we end up with, sorry about that, this thing's just shifting on its own, uh, 70 for mean square. So 140 divided by 2 is 70. Same thing for within. Take sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. The average, the mean square is 9.48. So now we have the mean squares for between and the mean, and the mean squares for within. So now we take mean squares between is on top. That's the effect of the eth ethnicity condition divided by mean squares within, so how people just naturally vary in their judgments without any reference to the IV. So we take 70 divided by 9.48. We end up with an F of 7.38. That F, 7.38, remember we rejected the HO at the 0 0.05 level. 0 0.05 was our alpha, has been our alpha all along. So we just put a little star in it. <clears throat> that little star just says this F is significant at the 0 0.05 level. And that's it for the homework. And so do let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, the live sessions are a good time to ask us, then everybody can learn things. Um, or you can also email me. So that's a review of the homework. And hopefully that uh, was clear, and hopefully you did well on the homework.